I, I am the Lady Miss Vagina Jenkins and it is time for Queer Astrology. <laughs> that tickles me. So as a reminder, this how-to series of videos is still rooted in queer decolonial astrology, um, but this how-to series seeks to look at um, issues from a more holistic perspective, understanding that your natal chart is your own energetic blueprint and how we could look at that energetic blueprint to address any of life's issues, problems, uh, that come up. This week I want to talk about each one of us and the role that we play according to our natal astrology charts in resistance and organizing against the chiriarchy. So in this video I will reference a term chiriarchy. Um, chiriarchy was a word that was coined by an academic called Elizabeth Schusler Fiorenza in 1992 to describe her theory of interconnected interacting and self-extending systems of domination and submission. Um, and so instead of naming all of these systems of oppression like white supremacy, colonialism, fat phobia, ableism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, I will put them all under the umbrella term of chiriarchy. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm using that term. Let me know if I'm not using it exactly right. I'm definitely open to learning. Just a reminder that each one of us has our own small part to play in the picture of like liberating us all. Intersectional liberation absolutely requires looking at intersectional forms of oppression. They're all connected. So how do we resist and organize? I think that so many times taking action looks like the direct action of going to a protest and those direct actions are useful. And also I want us to think about more sustainable ways. That's why I use the language of resist and organize um, rather than protest. Um, I think that resistance and organizing imply that this is a long range thing and this needs sustainable action. So yeah, let's look at resistance, organization, and sustained action as it relates to your holistic astrology chart. The first thing that I would advise is once again centering yourself knowing yourself and your capacity and what you have capacity to give sustainably for the long haul. There are a number of ways that I would advise folks look at that. Um, I would say one thing is looking at your chart and seeing what the dominant mode and the dominant element are in your chart. And we talked about this before, so I'm going to briefly go over it. But yeah, like what is the dominant mode? Are most of your planetary placements in cardinal signs? So coming up with the ideas or leading the charge? Are they in fixed signs where you are committed to seeing whatever project through to the very end and working on it a little bit every day? Um, or are they in mutable signs? So the idea of being able to go with the flow of energy, working on different projects um, as your energy allows. That's the first thing that one might want to know about themselves to understand their capacity. Um, and then you might want to understand what the dominant element is in your chart. Uh, are most of your planetary placements in fire signs, so reactivity and being moved by passion? Are they in air signs, so the gathering of data or thinking about things or researching things? Um, are most of your planetary placements in earth signs, so definitely working hands-on with things, with tangible uh, assets? Or are they in water signs, understanding how people feel and how that motivates them, uh, or, under or using your intuition? Another thing to think about might be the chart ruler of your natal chart. 
uh, whatever planet rules the sign of your ascendant. Uh, for example, your first house might be in Taurus, and so your rising sign is Taurus. Um, and then the sign that rules, and then the planet that rules Taurus is Venus. Um, and so what is it like to bring Venusian energy to the table? When I think about Venus, I think a lot about art making. Um, yes, like visual art, but also like singing, poetry, that kind of thing. Um, how can your art be used in resistance and organizing? And specifically looking at your chart ruler and looking for where that is placed in your chart. Like going back to that example of Taurus on the first house, so then the chart ruler is Venus. So then we look and see what house is Venus in in this chart. Oh, Venus is in the 11th house of groups and friendships and cohorts that we belong to. So how can you use your art or organize people in a group setting to make some sort of group art project um, or projects that can somehow lend themselves to disrupting the hierarchy and the status quo? Um, let's do another example of let's say a Gemini rising. Gemini rising is really cool. Um, so Gemini rising, the chart ruler would be Mercury, uh, which is known as the planet of ideas, communication, uh, the way that we learn and our thought processes. So then once again, where is Mercury placed in your chart? Uh, let's say Mercury is in the fourth house of family, ancestry, um, the home life. So what would it be like to organize your family, to change the thought patterns of your family, your direct family or chosen family, um, or to work with, communicate with your ancestors and understand the ways in which they have historically been fighting the good fight and how can you apply that to your reality now in the present. Um, so yeah, definitely looking at your chart ruler and where it's placed in the natal wheel. That could be a third strategy for understanding your energy and your capacity. And the fourth idea that I want to look at and explore a little bit more in depth is the Mars sign in your chart. Uh, both the Mars sign and your Mars ruled houses. So why Mars? Um, when I think about Mars, I think about war. Uh, Mars is associated with the god of war, uh, Aries, I'm pretty sure. Um, I might should have looked up that up before I started making a video, but I didn't. So let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but Mars is definitely associated with war. Um, war in terms of actual like fighting and being one on one in a conflict. But and that's how I see it when I think about it as Mars ruling Aries, but also strategizing and being strategic. And that's what I think about when I think about Mars as the planetary ruler of Scorpio. It's really important to understand your Mars sign uh, and also understanding what house your Mars is in um, to understand the ways in which you fight and what is important for you to fight for. I also think it's important to find Aries and Scorpio in your chart to understand how you do conflict and how you do strategy. So let's look at all three of those things. So first of all, like the Mars sign. Um, I'll give a couple of examples and maybe we'll look at some charts later too. Um, but let's think about, oh, uh, Mars and Aquarius. That's what uh, sign my particular Mars is in and what has been useful to me in terms of what I am 
uh, passionate about and what I'm willing to and how I'm willing to fight uh, has been in Aquarian ways using technology and thinking about generally speaking improving society as a whole and that's something that I associate with Aquarius both technology and uh, societal uh, advancement I'll say. Mars in Cancer, um, I feel like that could be the experience of being motivated by um, a sort of mama tiger type love, like the kind of love that you have for your family and that you would like stand up and do anything for them to protect them. Um, it's definitely like mama bear cub mama tiger kind of energy uh there's also the example of oh mars in libra um i've seen mars in libra become more activated when their relationships are at stake um and more activated as it relates to helping other people that they are close to specifically in one-on-one -on -one relationship um it's that kind of energy of you can talk about me all you want but don't talk about my friends <laughs> so yeah thinking about uh the sign that your mars is in and then what house is your mars sign in in terms of how we can use that energy so if it were Mars in the third house, I would definitely think of a person who is using their communication skills, their thoughts, their research skills, uh, the ways in which they can dat uh, gather data um, to fight for the things that are important to them. Um, another example could be Mars in the 12th house. Um, I would think of that as the energy of like a spiritual warrior, somebody that's using their uh, spiritual or religious energy to fight the good fight. And then lastly, where are the Mars ruled houses in your chart? Uh, where does Scorpio show up in your chart? Where does Aries show up in your chart? Think about Scorpio energy. I think about the strategies that one might employ to fight the good fight. Some examples of that could be uh, Aries in the fifth house, uh, fighting for one's self-expression, creativity, or their kids. Um, well, Aries in the tenth house, um, be having one's public reputation or career being known for being a fighter. The Scorpio house chart. How do you do strategy? Uh, maybe it's Scorpio in the second house, and so a lot of your strategy around organizing, disrupting uh, the status quo is rooted in money earning. Um, maybe your strategy is to earn so much money that you can put and donate to the cause. What if it's Scorpio in the eighth house, where Scorpio loves to be, that Scorpio is uh, associated with the eighth house and it's one of its most comfortable places to be. So what does it mean to be really good at strategy, um, especially as it relates to organizing things? Also the eighth house is associated with like secrets. Um, so what is it to be strategically sneaky and secretive, like a spy? for example. I'm not going to go through all the different signs and houses, but this is just something to consider as you're thinking about the whole picture of what it takes to be sustainable in the ways in which you organize and resist. Um, so I want to take a minute just to look at a couple of charts um, for some really well-known um, organizers, activists, um, specifically Malcolm X and Yuri Kojiyama, um, because they're besties and also because their charts really tell the story of organizing and resisting in the long term. Um, so let's look at those charts. So let's look at a couple of charts. Um, I specifically wanted to look at the charts of Yuri Kojiyama and Malcolm X 
because they are two of my favorite activists and they were friends. Um, yeah, let's start with uh, Yuri Kochiyama's chart. Um, so she is a civil rights activist as well. Um, and she's associated with Malcolm X because of their friendship. They also incidentally share the same birthday, but four years apart. Um, and yeah, a lot of her early activism was around um, the Nation of Islam and Pan-Africanism. Um, she was one of the few Asian American folks involved in that um, realm of activism um, in her early days. And then the latter part of her life, uh, her activism was uh, focused on support for political prisoners. Um, and I would classify it as maybe emotional support and informational support. So yeah, let's look at the chart. So the first thing that I want to look at is the fact that most of her planets are in cardinal signs here, this column, or mutable signs here, this column. Um, kind of a balance of energy really um, and a reminder that cardinal energy is the energy of coming up with ideas uh, being a leader in a particular realm and I definitely see like feel like that shows up in terms of her being one of the first if not the first Asian American uh, person involved with the Nation of Islam and then later on the uh, in pan-Africanist uh, activists activist groups um, and then mutable energy um, the energy of going with the flow and understanding that energy changes from day to day. Um, and yeah, I feel like her activism was in sort of maybe three main categories, her writing and research, um, as well as her support for political prisoners. And I think that her spirituality had a lot to do with her activism as well. And so I imagine a life in which she would look at those things from day to day. Is today a day to pray? Is today a day to make a visit or write a letter to a political prisoner? Is today a day to do some research or some writing on my own? So yeah, um, definitely a balance of cardinal and mutable energy. And in terms of the elements, I would say that there's a balance of air and water energy, um, which I would put in the, I would characterize in, a, in the similar way. That air energy would have made her really adept at researching, writing, theorizing, um, that sort of thing. And then that water energy would have had her prioritizing um, connections uh, and spirituality. Water is the realm of spirituality and intuition. Um, and so emotional support for uh, political prisoners definitely fit, fits in the realm of that, I believe. Um, and let's look at her chart ruler. We have, Air, um, excuse me, Libra on the ascendant. Uh, Libra, of course, is about uh, relationships. Remember, uh, we talked about that example of Libras, how they will prioritize uh, taking care of and protecting others even over themselves sometimes. Um, and so Libra is ruled by Venus. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and where is Venus in the chart? Oh, interesting enough, Venus is here in Aries. Um, so again, Aries energy, energy of war, conflict, um, Venus being about, in this context anyway, I think of being about one's values. Um, and so yeah, values that are rooted in direct conflict um, and standing up for and fighting for what you believe is right. Um, so yeah, that's the chart ruler and where it's placed in the chart. And finally, let's look for Mars. I thought I saw, ah, here we go. Ah, Mars in Gemini. So Mars in Gemini and in the eighth house. Yeah, I don't like looking at charts in Placidus. It's confusing, but uh, let's just go with the Mars in Gemini part and how that is the energy of being able to... I fight with my words and my thoughts and my ideas, if that makes any sense. So this is, I am motivated and passionate about doing that research, doing the writing, um, 
connecting ideas and connecting to amazing ideas. Um, and a lot of, from what I understand, a lot of her relationship with Malcolm X was um, in in dissecting the ideas of like uh, the Nation of Islam and Pan-Africanism as a whole and understanding how their struggles were linked with the struggles of Asian Americans. Um, so yeah, it's, that's an interesting Mars placement as well. This is a different website. Um, it does not have the uh, modes and the elements on here, but I looked at a different website and was able to find them. So uh, the majority of Malcolm X's placements are in cardinal and fixed signs. So cardinal, again, the energy of leadership. Um, a lot of times it's the public face. Um, and sometimes uh, a reminder to my cardinal signs, just because you are the person that came up with the idea or the public face of a thing doesn't mean that you necessarily are here to do that work. Uh, that is fixed sign behavior. Um, luckily for us, Malcolm X had a balance of cardinal and fixed signs. So definitely the idea of coming up with the ideas um, and sparking the sort of revolution and being committed to see that vision through to the end and working on it every day the blend of cardinal and fixed energy in terms of the modes and his dominant element was water um people forget that malcolm x was a deeply spiritual person um i think that there's because in the white imagination uh they often view uh, people that are fighting for li liberation as like angry or militant. I think those are words that are brought a lot, uh, are, are bandied about. But I think in Malcolm X's case, it was very much rooted in a deep emotional love for his people, as well as a deep abiding spirituality, which those are very much water sign uh, or water dominant uh, kinds of traits. Uh, the rising sign we have, ah, Sagittarius on the ascendant, uh, the freedom loving sign, the philosopher. Um, ah, it's so interesting, especially as his world is, especially in light of the fact that his worldview broadened over time um so dramatically so yeah sagittarius uh and where is sagittarius is ruled by jupiter so i'm looking for jupiter in the chart where is it i thought ah here we go okay jupiter in capricorn um so and in the second house so in this instance um the second house is most often associated with earning money but it's also associated with one's values um and with jupiter in the second house uh wherever jupiter goes it expands things so what how did his values expand over time especially with capricorn when i think about capricorn energy i think about the energy of hard work over time and so what were his values in terms of doing the hard work every day to expand one's values and consciousness um so yeah that is the chart ruler and where it's placed and then the last thing that i want to look at is mars oh also maybe scorpio and aries let's look at the mars first though uh, Mars ah, is here in Cancer. Oh, we talked about that example already. But yeah, Mars in Cancer definitely being uh, driven by this passion um, to care for folks. Like, I wonder how much of what he did was rooted in uh, a sense of protecting his people, particularly his family. Um, but his people in general i think of when i think about cancer i think about yes family but also ancestry and where you come from 
Um, so that's an interesting thing. And then Scorpio in the 12th house and where's Aries here in the fifth house. So yeah, uh, Aries, again, the way that we do conflict Scorpio, the way that we do strategy. Oh, look, the way that he did strategy was so connected, was connected to his, uh, second house is values um because of saturn uh capricorn is ruled by saturn and we find saturn here in the 12th house um so how much of his values his expansive values were connected to his 12th house things uh spirituality um and then in the sign of scorpio like how was his spirituality um how did his spirituality inform his strategy as it related to fighting the good fight um, as a Muslim, um, initially as a nation of Islam Muslim, but then later in life in a, as a Sunni Muslim? Um, and then Aries here in the fifth house, um, what role did self-expression um, and pleasure and joy and his children, fifth house themes are, children are one of the big fifth house themes. Um, what role did protecting his children and his own personal self-expression have in his activism? So yeah, those are just a couple of charts that I wanted to look at to give us an example of, of this in practice. I hope that helps. Yeah, that's the video. That's what I got. Uh, let me know if any of this resonated with you, if you learned anything new, if you have any questions. Um, yeah, comment below. I'm down to talk about these things further. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for commenting and interacting and like building this community up. Um, it's really just important and I love hearing from you all. Thank you for making time for queer astrology. Mwah. Power to the people! <laughs> we got this. We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. All right. I love you. Bye!